This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. This evening, we're back in the unemployment line. Holiday season normally means a boost in retail employment, but even those jobs are scarce now that the country and the state unemployment rates are above 10%. Hello, I'm Lloyd Patterson. This is CTC Connecting the Community. Tonight, let's get the latest on the Northwest Florida jobs picture. Our panel of experts includes Susan Nelms, Executive Director of Workforce Escarosa, an agency that unites employers and prospective employees. She has more than 20 years in workforce program leadership. Dr. Rick Harper has studied the Northwest Florida economy for many years as Director of the Haas Center for Business Research and Economic Development at the University of West Florida. We also welcome Carol Hawthorne, Manager of Human Resources for Navy Federal Credit Union for Northwest Florida, an area native who worked at UWF for nearly 20 years before joining Navy Federal four years ago. And still another guest on the front lines of the jobs front, Lauren Leffler, Director of Career Services at the University of West Florida. Her job is to develop new employment opportunities for UWF students and alums. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Once again, we're on the topic of jobs. And let me start with you, Susan Nelms. Is there anything you can tell us that offers some encouragement because there are so many people looking for a job, just about any job? There's some out there. Um, it still isn't as good as we would like to see it. it it's still a difficult uh, labor market situation. However, we're seeing some jobs come through. Part of it is the census that's coming up in 2010. Uh, we're going to hopefully post all of those job openings and, and do some of those uh, hirings for them. We're seeing a little bit in the like the UPS area, um, some retail, but not like we've seen over the past year. So a little bit, but not like we'd like to have it. Okay, thank you. Rick Harper, from your point of view, jobs picture? Susan's right. It's, it's weaker than it has been for several years. Uh, the good news is that uh, we're bumping along the bottom. Uh, Employment always takes a couple of quarters to recover after the gross domestic product recovery uh, resumes. And uh, what we're seeing now is, is third quarter GDP. We had strong growth. We're going to see similar numbers in quarter four, and we should see job growth really in the, the second quarter to third quarter of 2010. So uh, we're still a ways off, but uh, the end is in sight. I, I want to get more into predictions a little bit later, but right now, Carol Hawthorne, is there anything that you see? Because uh, you are work at one of the biggest employers in this area at Navy Federal. Yes, I can offer some encouragement. Navy Federal, a little background, we are the largest credit union in the world. And we currently have approximately 1,400 team members or employees here in the greater Pensacola area. Um, we will continue to expand our operations here in Pensacola, actually more than doubling them in the next five years. So we are in a very good position for hiring. Wow. Well, we'll be looking for a stampede after, after this program airs. We'll talk more about that, <laughs> too. Now, Lauren Leffler at UWF, you help with kids just launching their, their careers after graduation. How does it look for the recent graduates? We're actually looking at predictions for the class of 2010 at this point, and based on the statistics from the National Association of Colleges and Employers, employment will still be down, but only by 7% this year, whereas last year for our college graduates coming out in 2009, it was almost down 22%. Another good thing for our graduates is that construction, when it comes to engineering types of positions, finance types of positions are also up, which are large employers in our area, which is good news for our students and our alumni. As, as we look at this overall jobs picture in Northwest Florida and around the country, has it been the college graduates who have been affected or has it been more the, the blue collar, the, the manufacturing jobs that have been lost? 
Uh, in this recession, we've seen disproportionate numbers become unemployed in manufacturing and in construction. So those are traditionally the male-dominated uh, sectors of employment. So I'd say uh, unemployment during this recession has been toughest on the guys. And in fact, uh, the, stati the statistics came out this quarter that for the first time in U.S. history, women actually now hold uh, more than 50% of the jobs in the U.S., more than men. And through this recession so far, women have been less likely to have become unemployed. And lots of families have found that, uh, that uh, as the male head of household lost their position in construction and manufacturing, uh, the woman head of household was left in the position of being the sole breadwinner in the family. And that's a really tough situation. Susan Elms, is that, does that jive with what you've seen here in Northwest Florida? or the male, female, the jobs lost? Pretty much. I mean, some of the, the companies that have closed have, have been in the service industry. Uh, construction is one of those, but we've also had some stores closing around here. The, um, I think Albertsons, you know, it, the lower level retail, uh, we've seen those closures, <coughs> Circuit City and some of the others, and so those were a lot of jobs in this area that, that have gone away. Those are comprised of men and women, um, from what I can tell. But I do agree with Rick that we've seen probably more men in, in this recession than we have in the past in normal times. Um, they do seem to be affected more. And Carol Hawthorne, you employ mostly women at Navy Federal. Is well, that we are currently 70, approximately 73 percent women. Um, I don't, you know, we, we hire the most qualified, so I don't think it has anything really to do with gender, but we are, we are heavily. And the applicant pool that you're choosing from, is it mostly, is it mostly women who uh, apply for the job? I believe so, yes. I believe that the applicant pool is largely women. And, and that seems to be logically, logical based on what I think I know about the jobs at Navy Federal. Uh, you're, they're not usually operating bulldozers That's out correct. there. The they're mostly uh, frontline customer service positions. Okay, and you don't want crabby guys on the, <laughs> on the, answering, the answering the phone for me. No, but uh, we we like them both ways, men and women, as long as they're <laughs> customer service friendly. Let's talk. Let's talk some about the Christmas season coming up. Usually, in past years, anyway, it seems like everybody could anybody who could stand up could get a job during this during the holiday season retail hiring left and right are we seeing that this year as well through my office we post both part-time and full-time positions for our students and our alumni and I can tell you that so far we've not seen the normal rush that we've seen because what's happening is that those that have been unemployed for a long time are staying in those types of positions because they're not finding the full-time positions that they thought they would have found by this time. So it is very difficult for those that may be looking for part-time work because they're getting filled by those that are more experienced. Right, they, uh, these, the uh, employers in these in this retail market really have quite the job, the pool of candidates mm -hmm. to select from, okay. don't they? They, ha they have a great pool. And the other thing is with the economy the way it is, people aren't buying as much. Mm -hmm. So there isn't as, you know, as much of a need to hire the additional help through the holiday season uh, as we've seen in the past when the economy was better and people were willing to spend money or, or even go into debt with charge cards you know, to purchase uh, presents or whatever. And I really think the whole thing has just you know, put a downer on, on all the part-time, the retail, what we normally see pick up around this time of year, and I think it's just due to the spending habits of the consumer. And stores have all the employees they need, and they're reluctant to bring more on board, apparently, right? That's been one of the stories of this recession. Normally, you'd like to see retail sales growing at about a 6% rate from uh, December to December. Uh, and many stores, particularly in retail, uh, actually move into the black, hence the term Black Friday uh, after Thanksgiving. It's, it's when stores start making a profit for the year. But um, one of the characteristics of this recession has been that businesses are now making do. They're increasing their output, but they're doing it with their existing workforce. They're not bringing new people on. So mm -hmm. we're having uh, another one of those job less recoveries that we saw in the early 1990s, and uh, that's, uh, that's bad news for the job seeker. Well, the, the thing that we do know is that it can't last forever, that these things do turn around, 
and sooner or later they'll be uh, hiring again. If you did just joined us, uh, thanks for tuning in to WSRE Public Television. I'm Lloyd Patterson here with CTC Connecting the Community. We're, we'd like to talk every couple of months about what's going on <coughs> with employment in Northwest Florida. It's been such a tricky situation here since the recession. Florida's unemployment rate's over 10 percent. In fact, let's take a look right now at the uh, length of time people have been unemployed and we'll see what our panel thinks about this. Uh, according to uh, the latest data I saw, people uh, who have been unemployed for five weeks or less, about 20 percent. Five to 14 weeks, about 25 percent. Fifteen to 26 weeks on the unemployment, 19 percent. And look at this, 27 weeks or more, 36 percent of people unemployed for that long. That's, that is really something. That, that goes beyond just a, a small uh, uh, s slip in the economy, doesn't it, Rick Harper? It, it goes to show that uh, there are a lot of people for whom their skills just don't match the jobs that are available today in the economy. We economists would call them structurally unemployed. The structure of the economy has shifted uh, in 27 weeks, half a year. That's a long time to be unemployed. Skills get rusty and it gets harder to get back into the job market the longer you've been out. And so this is a very real and, and growing problem. Add to that the fact that on top of a roughly 10 percent unemployment rate, we also have another 6 to 8 percent of the workforce which uh, who view themselves as underemployed. They can't get the hours that they want. And that's a serious problem as well. We're looking at video right now from Workforce Ascarosa from one of the sites where people can come in. They can scan the job market. They can apply. They can get information there. It's really a, it's it's really quite a resource in the community. Susan Elms, are, are people uh, have they given up or are they coming in day after day like they were a, a few months ago? They're still coming in as far as we can tell. You seeing the same um, faces in there. I'm not sure about the same faces. We're seeing the same numbers or increased numbers. Um, we had, normally in a good economy, we have around 6,500 visits a month. We're up around 14,000, and we've stayed at 14,000 now for, I would say, well, between 12,000 and, and 14,000 for the last four or five months, and it's not declining. And so that's not a good indicator uh, for us on the economy. The other thing about the unemployment, um, the percentages that you just mentioned, in a good economy, the normal average uh, time that a person will draw unemployment compensation is around 13 weeks. And so it's really surprising to me on the percentages that you gave over above 14 weeks. Uh, usually the state of Florida, the average is around 13 for someone to lose a job and then find a new job. So we're way, way no. beyond that. Does, right. that. does that surprise you, Carol, Lauren? It does not surprise me. The bottom line for us is that our applicant pools are very large. Folks are very qualified, so we're able to take the very best, most qualified with experience, knowledge, and education. So as the applicant pools grow, of course our selections are smaller compared to the numbers. And what does this say, Lauren, to someone, uh, say a, a young man who's debating whether he's going to finish college, mm -hmm. stay in college, go to college? Mm -hmm. what, what does this say to him? It's very difficult because, you know, we're trying to educate our students that it's taking longer to find positions, so they need to start the process sooner when it comes to starting their resume and looking at to what their skills may relate to in, in the job market. We also know that GPA has become one of the most important things that our employers are looking for, which before it might have been leadership skills. Now GPA is so important for our employers, but it is also important that people are involved while they're, in, while they're at their university. So we're really starting even the freshman year to start, start teaching them. It's never too early to start the process and thinking about how their skills relate, but then also to get involved in school and, and to really figure out what they want to do. In this education. job market where jobs are so scarce, employers can not only say, hey, what was your grade point average? What were you involved in? I mean, what a, what a position they're in right now. It's a real uh, buyer's market for these, uh, for these employers. Rick mentioned structural unemployment that there are people out there, mainly men, who just don't have the skills for the jobs that are available. What, what, what do you offer them? What can, what, what can they, where can they get from you, Susan? Okay. 
Well, we offer retraining and for dislocated workers, someone that had a, a job and was laid off from that position, uh, we can actually help them go back to school and, and become retrained. Uh, it's interesting that out of the two main programs that offer retraining, which is an adult program and then the dislocated worker, a laid off individual, we have more adults than we can handle. People that have been looking, trying to find work, but they weren't necessarily laid off. They're working poor uh, individuals. Maybe they had a part-time job and lost it. But the dislocated worker, is, we're about, I would say three to one for dislocated workers coming in and accessing the retraining. And that's surprising to me. I thought that we would be overflowing with uh, those individuals and we haven't been. And I'm not sure what's driving that. It could be extended benefits that the government is giving for unemployment recipients. I just don't know. But we just haven't seen that increase, but we do have a lot of training programs we offer. We have almost a thousand people in school right now. The White House has announced a plan for a jobs summit uh, coming in December. <coughs> if you could, uh, if, and I doubt that the president will be getting on the phone to, to us, but you know, if he could call, if you could call and tell him right now, Rick Harper, what, what can they do at that level to help in Northwest Florida? That's a tough one. Uh, it's all about jobs right now. And uh, the federal government, uh, if it creates jobs itself by using taxpayer resources to fund job creation directly, whether it's to uh, something like the Civilian Conservation Corps, which we had uh, back during the Depression, or to do public works, that's really borrowing from tomorrow's taxpayers in order to create jobs in today's economy. And the, the rationale for doing that is to help pull us out of the recession, but the federal government basically shouldn't have a big role in creating jobs in the private economy. Instead, it should be providing the educational resources, the wherewithal for people to be able to get the training that they need to, and help them pick a field that they themselves feel will be beneficial uh, going down the road. Other thoughts for the president? I would just say that government doesn't create jobs, private sector business creates jobs. And I agree totally with Rick. For To get a job to be sustained, not to go away after the stimulus money, it has to be in the private sector field, a, a privately owned business. I, I don't think government is, is the way to go. All right, let's take a scan of uh, the employment rates at uh, different cities around the country because there are some cities that you can go to and there are just jobs all over the place. How do you feel about Bismarck, North Dakota? <laughs> Fargo, North Dakota, look at how low the unemployment rate is. Then you get down to the Fort Walton Beach Crestview market, about 7.2%. The uh, Pensacola market, uh, you get up uh, close to 10. Mobile, and this is a surprise to me because I thought Mobile was a jobs rich environment and they're higher than Pensacola. Then how about Detroit, uh, up to close to 20% and El Centro, California. I don't know what's going on in El Centro, but it's 30% unemployment there. Those are just some samples from around the country. So if this isn't, uh, it isn't the same every place. I don't know how you explain their unemployment rate being so low in the Dakotas. Rick Harper? Uh, agriculture and energy. There's a swath of states running from Texas uh, up uh, west of the Mississippi River up to the Canadian border that are in energy extraction industries and in agricultural commodities and those states are doing much better uh, than others. It's the states that were heavily invested in population growth uh, and are at the, ha the heart of the housing crisis including Florida, Arizona, Nevada, California and then the worst of all of course is Michigan home to the automobile industry. Uh, Ohio is also in bad shape but there is a, a lot of geographic concentration both of low unemployment rates such as Bismarck such as the the metro areas in Texas and high unemployment. I, I guess the thing to say for Northwest Florida is we're not hit nearly as hard as the metro areas in the southern part of our own state, which relied almost exclusively on tourism, fly-in tourism, and uh, retiree migration. All right, we if you follow the news uh, closely at all, you know that it seems like in the last few years, Mobile has announced a new manufacturing plant just about every few months, it seems like. 
and here I thought you would probably hear Susan Elms about many jobs in Mobile, but that sounds like their unemployment rate is just about as bad. I'm with you. I'm shocked over that. They've got the steel mill, I mean, going in over there. I wish the tanker project had done, you know, it was settled. It isn't. Um, there's talk of an um, a auto manufacturer going in around Bay Manette. And you hear about all that, and I know that they've had meetings um, on the steel mill over there. There was one recently, and I thought that was going to be thousands of jobs. And I'm really shocked that it's 11, over 11 percent in Mobile. Are you in the loop at, Esca, at, at uh, Workforce Escarosa on the jobs? Can people apply here for manufacturing jobs there? Probably not. Um, we've attended the meetings and, and have gotten the information they would have to actually choose to list the jobs over in Northwest Florida for us to be able to take the applications. Um, however, we're internet based and as long as their jobs are posted on the internet, we can definitely access them and handle them and help people apply for them. One of the things we've been talking about applicants needing to be, have, be flexible, needing to have the, uh, the education, the, the training they need for whatever job comes along. But there are a lot of, especially men uh, who maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago had got an arrest on their record for some perhaps less serious crime. And now they're going to, uh, they're going to different services, they're going to attorneys, they're appealing to the state to have these criminal records expunged. Because what happens if you apply for a job and you, you don't reveal that you were arrested one time, if you might think, it was, hey, that was 20 years ago, who knows? But they find out, don't they, the, uh, the employers. They know if you're, they know who's telling the truth. <laughs> Absolutely, as a financial institution, we obviously have to be very careful with our applicants and the people that we bring on board. So we do run background checks, and the biggest advice I can give is to be honest, absolutely be honest. Is it a, is it a job killer, do you think, Lauren, for someone, I mean, you could, you could, people make changes in their lives all the time. Mm -hmm. They go back to school. Mm -hmm. They get a degree. They feel like that should be, that should be old news. Mm -hmm. Should they, what would you tell people to do? Well, I think it's industry specific too. You know, when it comes to jobs with the federal government, obviously you're going to need to have a pretty clean record in order to get those types of employment opportunities. So, in terms of what I would advise someone to do is just as uh, just as she mentioned, is to be very honest and upfront from the beginning about what may come up on a background check. What I've always been told by employers, if it, they're honest on the front end, it may help them in the, in the process a little bit more than if something pops up and and the employer is surprised by it. It seems a bit counterintuitive though you're applying for this job and you know a hundred other people are applying for it and they say yeah you check yes I have been arrested on the application and they're gonna say whoa get out of here with that guy <laughs> that doesn't that make sense you'd, you'd want to practically lie about that wouldn't you yeah but you should never do that <laughs> it, yeah. is, it is absolutely tough and it's a tough situation to be in but yes you don't want to do that it's much better to be honest on the front line, as she mentioned, and um, then we expect that you know honesty will be forthcoming. If we if we do find out later, and then we need to release you, that that's a lot more embarrassing. There's a lot more that goes with that. All right, and about about applicants, do you like to see uh, Carol at Navy Federal? Do you like to see a nice long line of job applicants outside the campus there on Monday morning? Um, do you like to, do you want, it, what I'm saying, do you want FaceTime with these applicants? Is it, does it impress you for people to come out and knock on the door and say, can I fill out an application? <laughs> can I, uh, I want to work We do have here? such a number of applications. Um, our applications are filled out online. Um, and then we would telephone, screen, test, and bring the applicants in for interviews. So to come to Navy Federal in person is, is probably not going to be the best idea on the front end. Now you hear that so much anymore. They don't, nobody wants to look at an applicant face to face anymore, do mm -hmm. they? No. It's, no. it's funny too, because we train our students, you know, when you're writing a cover letter, try to write it to a specific person. If there's not one listed, try to find out who it is. And it's almost impossible now to be able to do that with the internet based job applications, right. very difficult. And years ago, we would tell applicants, you know, dress nicely and go to, go to the site and try to meet a manager and talk to them, but no longer. In, in some instances, though, it, it may still work. I, I, with Navy Federal, they're so large and the number of people they hire, 
we did a job fair uh, recently with the, the junior college in their career office and we had 52 employers and we had 1,200 people go through in about four hours and they did hire people on the spot. So, so those that participate in some of those, I, I don't want it right. to be so negative that, that right. don't give up on that portion of it and always be concerned about your appearance and your soft skills and how you appear not only in person but on paper. Right, and I would agree a job fair is an absolutely great place to go. Um, to meet managers or hiring mm -hmm. officials, absolutely. WSRE is right on the campus of uh, PJC, the main campus here in Pensacola, and we have had job fairs here. And uh, I haven't, I haven't uh, been to them myself, but I've always heard that there's an excellent turnout. I didn't know they hired right on the spot. Mm -hmm. I should have been there. <laughs> I should have been there myself. Uh, we only have a couple minutes left. Let me ask your predictions for where, if we did this show six months from now. Uh, what's the jobless picture going to be in this area? Rick Harper, start with you. Bad news is that six months from now, the jobless rate is going to be essentially unchanged from where it is today. Uh, but six months from now, then looking forward, uh, that's when we'd expect to have substantial improvement in the job market by the end of 2010. Susan Elms, six months from now, what do you think you're going to see? I think I'm going, I agree with Rick. I, I don't think it's going to to get fixed that quickly. I really think it's going to take a, at least another six months after that to start seeing it turn around. All right, Lauren, what do you think is going to be like, say, next summer? I think employers are being very conservative with how they're spending their recruiting dollars right now, and so I think it's going to be much of the same. It's going to be um, very flatlined in terms of what they're going to be able to offer. Okay, and Carol, I know Navy Federal is actually planning <laughs> to, you, you guys are in a growth mode. We are in a growth mode, but I'd say during the next six months, it will be a slow growth. Um, we're, you know, we need to be careful also. But over the next five years, it's going to be great. It's going gonna, it's gonna to really double. Uh, we want to show some helpful sites if uh, you would like to uh, check these out. WorkforceEscarosa.com, and there's the phone numbers there. Uh, there's links to a lot of good programs that you may not know about if you'll check these sites. Also Jobs Plus One Stop, that's for Okaloosa and Walton counties, and they're the private uh, employment services. Keegan Staffing works with a lot of people. Landrum Staffing, we've had their representatives on our programs before, and they can be, they can be very helpful. I guess it's the, the suggestion is do everything, leave no stone unturned. Would that right. be the final, <laughs> final word? Well, we thank you very much. Uh, Susan Nelms, Executive Director of uh, Workforce Escarosa. Uh, Rick Harper, as always, you're on the spot. I hope you're wrong on some of your <laughs> predictions, but I got a feeling you're probably right. Uh, Carol Hawthorne with Navy Federal, thank you for being with us. And it's good to have uh, UWF's Lauren Leffler here. Uh, we appreciate uh, your insights on this topic too. And we'll come back and see how this uh, picture is all shaping up. Uh, down the road a ways. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Lloyd Patterson for WSRE PBS for the Gulf Coast. Good day.